newest ally of the United Nations, Brazil, largest republic in South America. Brazil, only five hours by bomber across the South Atlantic to Vichy-controlled Dakar. Stirred by Nazi sinkings of unarmed Brazilian vessels, the wanton killing of Brazilian citizens, a neutral nation rises to demand war upon Germany and Italy. Massing before the Chamber of Deputies, an aroused people hear patriots declare that this assault upon Brazil's honor shall not go unchallenged. In Rio de Janeiro, the German embassy is closed. Its diplomats, along with the Italians, are held to ensure the safety of Brazilians in Axis countries. Axis-owned shops and stores are closed and guarded. Axis ships are confiscated. Today, the friendship founded between President Roosevelt and Brazil's President Vargas becomes a military alliance. The solemn pact signed by these two American nations weld them more closely now than ever before. And under the terms of Lend-Lease agreements, United States ships rush arms and supplies to their southern ally. From American aircraft factories, U.S. trained Brazilian pilots take home training planes for their rapidly growing air force flying them direct from North to South America. One of the most remarkable flights ever made by training planes, a 6,000 mile trip under their own power. Always an air-minded nation, Brazil is proud of her 600 new landing fields and airdromes. Sky patrol on the alert. Pilots rush to man their ships. For Brazil, a country greater in area than the continental United States, must defend a coastline of 4,800 miles. From Brazil's shipyards, new vessels are going down the ways. President Vargas promised Brazil will defend her waters, will man her coasts. The Brazilian Navy puts to sea. Her efficient fighting force now joining United States and allied warships on anti-submarine patrol. Since 1923, a U.S. naval mission in Brazil has helped strengthen its good neighbor to the south, sending U.S. ships and U.S. sailors on goodwill visits to Brazilian ports. Now, with Brazil at war, ships of all the United Nations may base in her harbors. Today, Brazil's armament factories are tuning at top speed. Her armed forces are on the march. Again, as in the last war, Brazil stands with the United States, first South American nation to declare war on fascist Italy and Nazi Germany. Servicemen on 24-hour leave, sailors in port waiting to rejoin their ships, soldiers on furlough, all find free food and a warm welcome at recreation centers in nearly every American city. Any United Nations uniform is their passport. British tars and Yankee seamen having the time of their lives. Variety stars and theatrical troops donating their time and talent to keep the boys smiling. A famous 
dancing star, and none ever played to a more appreciative audience. A convoy of troop ships arriving in India. Ships scattered as far as the eye can see. These are British Tommies, hardened, seasoned veterans of crack brigades, rushed to meet the threat of invasion to India. Big fellows they are, from all parts of the empire, bringing supplies and equipment in such numbers that no single port in India can handle it all. Reinforcing the British come more troops from the United States. Thousands of miles from home, their job is to protect India should Japan decide to strike. They bring a mighty arsenal of equipment, powerful new guns, tanks, and trucks, equipment fresh from the assembly lines of America's war industries. Here in this strange, mysterious land of 350 million souls, they are quick to make friends. They even try to learn some of the Hindus' many dialects that they may better know Mother India and her people. Tent cities spring up overnight. Bombers are timed and tested. For with the lifting of the monsoon, they must be ready to meet the enemy. America fighting a global war on 30 fronts. <laughs> Aboard a United States aircraft carrier somewhere at sea, Army P-40s, Tomahawks or Kitty Hawks, the British call them, are now ferried to within flying range of their new bases, all ready for action. Army pilots who'll take them ashore get last-minute instructions. Wheel to the flight deck, the speedy fighters are ready for the takeoff. Partway by carrier, then the pilots deliver them the rest of the way. Getting them into the air requires real flying skill. cooperation between the armed forces, Navy carriers speeding Army planes and pilots to United Nations bases overseas. <laughs> 